Hello everyone, my name is Dionys and this is VEMonline.net. In this short video we will keep expanding on shoulder stability. In my last videos we started to talk about uh, so-called SITS muscles, that's S-I-T-S, uh, which are basically the first letters of muscles that surround the shoulder joint. And as we learned they are very essential for shoulder stability. Uh, today we'll take a look at them individually and we will start with supraspinatus. Let's start with the anatomy. We'll cover origin, insertion, action and nerve supply. Origin and insertion, those are the attachments of the muscle. So there's going to be starting point of the muscle and then there's going to be the end point of the muscle. Okay, so every muscle will have at least two attachments, origin and insertion. Both of these points will be brought together as muscle fibers contract. In anatomy, the least movable point is going to be origin and more movable point is going to be insertion. Now we are talking about supraspinatus. Uh, this particular muscle is originating from supraspinous fossa of scapula and it inserts into greater tubercle of humerus, in particular superior facet of greater tubercle of humerus. Primary action of supraspinatus muscle is abduction of shoulder. Now it will stabilize glenohumeral joint as well, but abduction is definitely more important action. Every muscle will act on both attachment points, origin and insertion. In this particular case, the more mobile point is found on humerus, uh, because the mus as the muscle fibers shorten, we will get, uh, get humeral bone into that elevated state, we will elevate the uh, humerus towards the ceiling. Of course we can flip that around as well, let's say we will fix, uh, fixate the uh, humeral bone, then we will actually start to tilt the uh, scapula. Uh, this particular action is called downward rotation of the uh, scapula, scapular bone. But in reality uh, this action is very weak if, if it's even there and I shouldn't really mention it for this particular muscle at all. Supraspinatus muscle is innervated by suprascapular nerve. That's C5-C6 uh, nerve roots. Uh, muscle is supplied by suprascapular artery. Uh, that's blood supply and uh, its main synergist is deltoid muscle, uh, in particular middle fibers. So synergists are all the muscles that will act the same way. They will be doing exactly the same work. In this particular case, uh, supraspinatus and deltoid muscle middle fibers will produce uh, elevation of the uh, humerus. Uh, they, will, they will produce abduction of the uh, humeral bone. So humeral bone go, going towards the uh, ceiling. Let's quickly run over this one more time. So we have origin, insertion, action, nerve supply, blood supply, and synergists. In anatomy, the more important information is definitely origin insertion of the uh, muscle and action. That would be like the third uh, nerve supply, good to know. Uh, blood supply synergists uh, as well, good to know, but definitely not as important as to know uh, where, where does it start, where does it end, and what type of uh, action will it produce. In this particular case, supraspinatus muscle originates from supraspinous fossa of scapula. It inserts into greater tubercle of humerus, uh, superior facet in, in particular. Action, abduction of the uh, shoulder. As well, it will stabilize glenohumeral joint. Uh, nerve supply, uh, suprascapular nerve, C5, C6 nerve roots. Blood supply, suprascapular artery. Synergist, deltoid muscle, in particular middle fibers. Activities of daily living. So where do we need this muscle? We need it uh, to reach above the head. We need it to wave goodbye, for example. Basically, we need it to lift our hands above the head. In particular, uh, this, uh, this particular muscle is going to be the strongest during first 30 degrees of abduction. This is very important. Uh, as we go farther along, 60, 90, 120, 180, they are going to be other muscles that are going to be way more powerful than supraspinatus. Basically, supraspinatus initiates abduction of the uh, shoulder joint. What are the most common injuries of uh, supraspinatus muscle? Supraspinatus tendonitis, that's number one for sure. Tendonitis. Uh, everything that ends with itis means that there is some sort of uh, inflammatory response. Uh, in this particular case, uh, this is very common for supraspinatus because it passes through this uh, 
uh, arch through this tunnel right underneath the chromium process of the scapula. If there is some sort of injury, if, uh, if, if we rupture some fibers, if there is a muscular pull um, or uh, let's say part, partial tendon rupture, um, this, this passage through, the, through this tunnel is gonna, gonna get more and more problematic. Uh, if we keep using the muscle, this will recreate uh, this inflammatory response and we will go through this uh, repetitive stress uh, which is actually in condition number two strained with repetitive uh, forceful abduction of the shoulder uh, this is we're talking mostly about uh, sports uh, so let's say uh, baseball golf uh, anything that that involves uh, some type of a uh, um, movement where where there is uh, abduction of the shoulder involved as well. If we keep keep yanking on uh, supraspinatus as it heals, uh, uh, muscle fibers uh, will start to thicken. There's going to be this uh, ongoing scarring of muscle tissue on the, and the tendon tissue as well, and uh, this passage through this uh, arch uh, right underneath the acromion is going to get more and more problematic. So there you have supraspinatus tendonitis and repetitive strain, repetitive stress. These two conditions definitely at the top. As we all already know, supraspinatus muscle is one of the uh, rotator cuff muscles, uh, so-called SITS muscles, SITS muscles. Uh, these are supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor and subscapularis. The tendon of supraspinatus muscle blends with glenohumeral joint capsule. Supraspinatus muscle is the only rotator cuff muscle that does not create any type of rotation movement at all whatsoever. Only abduction, only abduction of the uh, shoulder joint. Sometimes for some reason at the uh, suprascapular notch, uh, suprascapular nerve entrapment is possible. So that basically means mechanical compression on nerve fibers. Uh, this obviously can weaken the uh, muscle action. All through supraspinatus muscle is most active during first 30 degrees of uh, abduction motion. Studies have shown that uh, supraspinatus assists uh, the shoulder abduction through the entire uh, range of motion. Uh, that's because uh, it will help uh, to pull out the uh, joint capsule out of the way during shoulder abduction. Supraspinatus passes under the acromion process and it is protected by subacromial bursa. Irritation of this bursa can result in subacromial bursitis. Again, bursitis, uh, itis, inflammation, inflammation of the bursa. Uh, now, what what the bursa is? Uh, bursa basically think uh, think of it as of a pillow. It's like a suspension. Uh, we'll find bursas underneath uh, muscle attachments uh, just to prevent this uh, constant rubbing um, on the uh, of the tendon on the bone. Excessive strain and trauma can cause tendonitis of supraspinatus tendon and it can be associated with the uh, calcific tendonitis. Now that's a very nasty condition. All these conditions, uh, they will have a tendency to get into this uh, chronic stage and to stay there. So especially if you're in sports, there's going to be this ongoing... Uh, ongoing battle uh, you you you're getting better you're getting worse you're getting better you're getting worse so especially if you're in sports you will you will want to keep training and uh, that usually makes it worse because uh, you you keep yanking on that tendon you keep yanking on that structure and uh, that just recreates this inflammatory response and you you're back into that chronic stage again uh, so you will definitely need a very good specialist that can uh, guide you through this successfully after the age of 40, ruptures of uh, supraspinatus tendon become quite common. And this rupture of the tendon may be also seen after calcification of the tendon. This is uh, considered as one of the most important factors for clinical condition known as uh, frozen shoulder. Have you heard about frozen shoulder? Uh, now in my praxis, uh, I have uh, worked with quite a few frozen shoulders. Uh, it can be very challenging. Uh, it can be quite... Uh, quite painful process uh, but the recovery is definitely possible now this is it for supraspinatus muscle thank you for watching um, uh, most of this information comes straight out of this book uh, uh, muscle manual red muscle manual nikita vizhnyak put a lot of work a lot of effort in this uh, 
Uh, he's a colleague of mine. Um, I strongly recommend to get this book if you are in personal training uh, in Pilates, uh, yoga, anything at all, physiotherapy, chiropractic, massage therapy, get it, you won't regret it. This is a very young channel. We just recently started doing this. Uh, hit that subscribe button. Please help us grow. Uh, if you found this useful, share it with your friends. Uh, thank you for your support and see you later.